Now to focus on our FOMO story today, that is NVIDIA, of course. NVIDIA has been the most, mm -hmm. arguably, FOMO feeling type stock this year mm -hmm. because, first of all, I will say at the Market Drive this weekend, it's something that pretty much everyone talks about. And I to speak to that hype, I was in Silicon Valley and every single billboard, I mean, I'm not even joking, I could have documented it, has some tie to AI. Everything is AI. The airport is all AI. It's like all we could talk about was AI. So NVIDIA has been, no doubt, the biggest beneficiary of that. Yeah, and they sell the key thing that you need to do something in the world of AI, which is semiconductor chips, and they happen to be the best at it. And so this is the company all along that makes the most sense that it's increased in price. Maybe it's gone too far. Uh, maybe uh, this isn't uh, something that can last for uh, an indefinite amount of time. But clearly right now, they're the one that can point to the dollars and cents on uh, their income statement and say, look at all our new revenue, look how much more profits we have because of this hype. Not the other companies in this space can say that yet. Yeah, I absolutely agree. And I would say that they have been, their timing has been great. Their earnings call narratives have been great. Their CEO has been incredible at the way he is able to speak about the future of AI and their role in AI. I mean, as far as laying out a positive narrative, he's another one I would relate to Mark Zuckerberg, where he's just been able to tap into the correct narrative and tap into the right technology. I mean, frankly, their technology speaks for themselves. But Goldman Sachs today d did add them to their conviction list. And this is, again, one of these terms that we joke at because I've been talking various conviction lists, best ideas lists, top tactical ideas list was another one I discussed today, just today. They did also keep a buy rating on shares with a $605 price target. Does imply some significant upside from where we're currently trading. They do expect this company to maintain their staff status as the accelerated computing industry standard for the foreseeable future, given their competitive moat and urgency with which customers are developing and deploying increasingly complex AI intelligence models. And again, to speak to Silicon Valley, if the amount of attention that is being paid to AI right now is any indication of where the industry feels this is going, this is definitely a name that stands to benefit. I was also discovering different ways you can basically set up threads on X or various social media where AI can be like your social media agent for you. This is something I discovered over the weekend. I'm fascinated by it. They can like, it can churn out content for you on your platform while sounding like you. Like it can like learn your voice. Yeah, and until that, that goes like, wrong, that's a great idea, right? Well, until it goes rogue. That is one way, that is a horrible thought, but just to go, and it goes to show the way that AI is continuing to implement my life. Yeah, this is, I think South Park joked about this uh, too when it came to chat GPT. Look, the, the thing for me that makes this conversation difficult from a trading uh, investing standpoint when it comes to NVIDIA is, if you saw this coming, if you were someone who saw the AI drew uh, the line say, okay, I don't know about AI, but if this is the next big kind of uh, investment for these companies from a CapEx standpoint and, and R&D, who's, who's gonna be the beneficiary in terms of the technology and stuff? You draw that to NVIDIA, it makes a ton of sense when the stock's 100 bucks and it's struggling. It makes a lot of sense when it's 200 bucks and still well off its highs. This stock is $450 now and has gone four and a half times its lows that it made less than a year ago. So to me, the question now isn't that, yeah, the company is benefiting, it's how much of it is priced in and is it even overshot? We are talking about uh, some of these names, uh, the Teslas of the world, the Rivians of the world. They've all had their times in the sun. None of them are trading on their highs. We were talking about the shippers. You know, when things were going very well, you saw those stocks go higher, still going pretty well for them. They're still shipping a lot of boxes, yet the stocks have all come down. So I look at this as, we're starting to watch the, the bullish side get a little bit more crowded. If you kind of imagine these as uh, you know, you know, opposite sides of a, of a scale, it's hard to make the bearish argument for NVIDIA right now. There's not a lot of bears on that side of the scale. So sometimes it just becomes the crowded trade. I think that's the risk for investors. It's not that NVIDIA is struggling or something's gonna go wrong. It's just how much more upside is there left to squeeze? Granted, Goldman Sachs says it can go to 605. So you can do the math, that's 160 from here. Okay, there you go. 160 okay. bucks. That's crazy. And I was just trying to find the street high. Rosenblatt has an $800 price target. And this analyst has been right, actually. So, I mean, not right, like, like when it comes to just NVIDIA, but right consistently with our coverage. They're not just, like, throwing out an outlandish price target. $800. I mean, the average price target right now, just to say it among analysts, of the 35 analysts I could see, is $521. So, 
800 is ridiculous. 600 even feels a little bit ridiculous when the street average is 521 and shares are trading at 447. I mean, you make a good well, point. You have to start thinking about it in terms of market cap at that point. Like, otherwise, it's just dollars on the screen, right? It goes from 450 to 600. What does that mean? Well, that means it went from being a trillion dollar company to a one and a half trillion dollar company. If it goes to 800, it's a two trillion dollar company. How many two trillion dollar companies are there? Four, one? I think. Two trillion? I mean, we I, got, you got trillion, maybe you I got Apple, Apple Microsoft. Microsoft. I mean, I don't. Is Amazon? I think Saudi Aramco. Okay, so there you go. I mean, I that, that's that's where, that's where you're at. Okay, you're bigger than Amazon at that point. You're bigger than than Alphabet at that point. Maybe, but may, I mean, they're selling chips. They're selling chips. I guess it depends. Is, is an AI company worth a valuation as lofty as Are Apple? they an AI company, though? Are they actually developing AI, or are they just selling the technology so someone no, else can? you're right. They're, so, they're the back end of AI, So when AI, AI finally is monetizable and it creates all these efficiencies, mm -hmm. are they benefiting from that, or are they having their benefit now? They're the ones who are benefiting now. These other companies ho are hoping it becomes monetizable. We saw how long the metaverse lasted. If they don't start showing dollars and cents to shareholders and AI, these uh, projects, as expensive as they are, will not get the un unlimited runway that they have right now. And we remember the blockchain and the NFT trade that has completely dissipated.